Hey guys, it's Mr. Challoner here. I hope everyone's doing well at home and welcome to your first online STEM lesson. So for today's lesson, um, you're, just, you're going to be watching a screen recording of me using some of the basic tools in Tinkercad. After watching the video, um, you can then use Tinkercad to create your own 3D model using some of the skills that you learnt. Okay, before we get started, I just need to mention a few things. You may have noticed that there is a yellow circle around my mouse pointer. I put that there just so it's easier for you to see the movement of my mouse when we're working on Tinkercad. Um, it also will tell you what buttons I'm clicking. So if I push the left button down and hold it, the circle will turn orange. If I click it, it will flash orange, and the same goes for the right. If I push my right, right mouse button down and hold it, it will be a red circle, and if I tap it, it will flash red. Uh, another thing to mention is that if you look down the bottom right-hand corner of the screen here, when I type something on my keyboard or I use a keyboard shortcut in Tinkercad, it will flash up down here so you know what buttons I'm pressing. So I press space and space comes up. If I press shift and Z, it will show you the buttons that I'm pressing here. Okay, I'm ready now to sign in. Uh, you also should be ready to sign in. This, this video is step two of lesson one. So step one was explaining how to create your account. So by now you should have an account. And if you do, you should be able to click sign in here, sign in with Google, and then we're we're going to wait for it to load. Um, when it loads, you might see something really awesome come up on the screen, and that's the Parramatta Eels logo. Go the Eels. No, that's not what it is. What it is is your dashboard here. So this here is called your dashboard, and it will display all of your 3D creations that you have made, your 3D models. From here, you can uh, click into them, you can go into your designs, you can edit them, you can change them, you can delete them if you like. So this is your kind of home section of Tinkercad. We're going to create create a design now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my mouse over here. I'm going to click create new design. Now that we are loaded into our work plane, our workspace, um, the first thing we need to do is we need to name our design. Okay, this is a really good habit to get into. We need to make sure every time you create a new design, the first thing that you should be doing is naming it. Um, Tinkercad automatically generates these completely random names for your designs. Um, so it's good to get into the habit of changing it because they make no sense. So I'm going to call this one Lesson 1. And then I'm going to say Car because today we will be modeling a car. Okay, so the first skill that we're going to look at um, in this lesson is just navigating or moving around your work, your workspace or your work plane. So CAD is about 3D modeling, okay? So we want a three-dimensional view of what we're actually creating. So we need to be able to look at our model from all these different angles and perspectives. So the way that we do that is we use these um, tools on the left hand side here. So if you see this cube here, we can left click this cube and we can drag it. And when we drag it, you'll notice that the work plane also moves in the same direction. So I can navigate around using that. I can go to the bottom, I can do, go to the top. You can also just directly click on the word. So if I click on the word back, it's going to show me from show me my model from the back view. I'm going to angle it up a little bit because that's completely flat. Uh, I can click the top. That will show me my model from the top view. I can also click these arrows, which will take me back to a different view. So I like to just left click normally and drag around to find my viewpoints when I'm working with the cube. So that's the cube. The other buttons here are pretty handy as well. Not all of them, but the main ones you'll be using will be the home button, which when you click, it will take you back to your original view that you started in. Okay, so this is your home view. Um, once you're there, you can, you know, use the cube again to move around. The other icon, the other items here that you'll be using are the zoom in, 
which is quite handy. And you can go all the way in if you like, really far, and the zoom out button. So the plus, this guy here, zoom in, minus, zoom out. Instead of using these, the plus and the minus over here to zoom in, you can actually use the keyboard shortcut as well. So if you push plus on your keyboard, it's going to zoom in. And if you press minus on your keyboard, it's going to zoom out. If you are using a mouse on your computer, you can, and it has a scroll wheel on it, you can also scroll forwards, which will zoom in, and you can scroll backwards, which will zoom out. For those people who are using a mouse, you you can change your view by right clicking. You can see it's right clicked because the red circle. I'm right clicking and I'm holding my right click button down and I'm moving my mouse. So this is probably the way I would navigate around to my work plane the most. I right click and I drag. So if you're using a mouse, I would use this technique, just right click and drag and you can change it as you're working. But if you are using a Chromebook or something without a mouse, I would suggest using this cube to move around because it just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, I am ready to start actually modeling and building my car now. So the first thing that I'm going to do is look on this side here. And here are all my objects that I can use. I'm going to start with a box. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag that and I'm going to let go and it will place it on my work plane. Once it's placed here, you'll notice that this menu popped up. Now, at the moment, my shape is a hole and I don't want it to be a hole. I want it to be a solid. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but I want it to be a solid. So I'm going to click solid here. Once I've clicked that, you'll notice that this, um, all these colors have popped up. You can change the color of your object if you want. Uh, it could be blue, you could change it to whatever you want, but this is the body of my car and red cars go faster. So I am going to keep it as red. Now, once I have that there and my object is selected, you'll notice that there are some white squares, some black squares and some arrows. These are the tools that you use to change your object. So if I click this white square here, and I hold down and drag it out, you'll notice it changes multiple dimensions of my shape, okay? You can see this side and this side are, are changing at the same time, okay? You can change it differently like that. That's what the white squares do. They change more than one side. I don't want it to look like that, so I'm gonna click my undo button up here and it will take me back to my original cube. The black squares are a little bit different. What these squares do, they only change one dimension of your shape. So if I wanted to bring this face out a little bit, I could grab the black square and it's only going to pull out that dimension. Now this is going to be the body of my car, so I'm going to make it a little bit longer. I think 50, this looks like a good, I think a good start. So you'll notice that the num the measurements also appear here. And I remembered that the original cube was 20. So if I just type 20 and then press enter, it will take it back to um, my cube, but I wanted it to be 50, so I'm going to type 50 and I'm going to press enter. You don't have to worry too much about the dimensions at the moment, but I'm just letting you know that that's you can you can change the uh, measurement by just typing it in. All right, this is looking good. So we have I'm getting excited. We have our car body here, but if we look at it, we can change the view and we can see that there is a problem because there is no room to put our wheels. So we need to make room to put our wheels. So the way we're going to do this is if you select the object, every object when you select it has a little cone at the top. If you click that and you drag it, you can change the distance. You can move it down or you can move it up. So we're going to move it up because we need room for our wheels. Uh, I'm going to change my view over here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. The body of my car is floating, so we need to add some wheels to hold it up because it is not a floating car. So I'm going to, if you go over to the right of your screen here where all your objects are, have a look through and I think the closest thing to a wheel is the tube. So I'm going to click that, drag it over, drop it onto my work plane and now I have a wheel. It's an orange wheel. Um, I could change it to black. I think I'll change it to black so it looks a little bit more like a wheel. 
There's a few things wrong with it. For one, it's really big, but I think the biggest issue is that it is flat and it's not connected to the car. That's a pretty big problem. So we need to fix that. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the wheel is standing up. Otherwise, it's not gonna look like a car. The way we do this is if you see this little arrow here with the, the two heads on it, this is what we use on any object to change the orientation. So at the moment it's flat, it's at zero degrees. We want to stand it up, so we're going to move it to 90 degrees. The way you do this, you grab it, you hold it, and you drag it, and you'll see that it will snap to 90 degrees. All right, at least the wheel is standing up now. It's still pretty far away from the car, so that is our next, and it's still pretty big, and also it's below the plane. So let's fix that first. So remember from the last step when we raised the body of the car, we can now raise the wheel up. The way we do this is by using the cone. So I'm going to drag it up and there we go. My wheel is now nice and flat on the plane. I'm now going to try and move it a little bit closer to my car so that I can see the size, if it's too big, or what's going on with it. So the way we do this is you can click and you can drag it with your mouse, but I find the easiest way is to actually just use tap the keys, the arrow keys on your keyboard, so up, down, left, right, and you can move it into place. So I'm going to have a look here, change my view. Okay, that is way too big, so I'm going to change the size of my wheel now. So the way we did this, if you remember from a couple of steps ago with the um, white squares, if you see this white square, I'm going to click it and I'm going to drag it in. So I'm dragging it in and you'll notice that it's changed into an oval now. Now this is a problem because my car is going to be very bumpy if it has an oval wheel like this. So I don't want it an oval, I want it a circle. Now the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go back and undo that step because I don't want it to look like that. And this is a really important tool that you'll use lots in Tinkercad, okay? And it's the shift key, it's the magical shift key. So if you click this shift key and hold it down, so you push shift, it's on your keyboard, you push shift, you hold it down, you'll notice there, shift is selected. And now I'm going to grab the white um, box and when I drag it now, you'll notice that the wheel actually stays the same scale, okay, or the same shape. It doesn't lose its shape. It still stays a, a nice circle. So I can drag it no, anywhere I want, and it's always going to stay in that same, that same shape. So I'm going to fix my wheel to about that size. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks all right. Um, it's a bit too far forward of the car, so I'm going to use my right arrow and take it right, and I'm happy with my first wheel. Okay, we've got one wheel. It's looking good. It's starting to look kind of like a car. However, I want four wheels on my car, but I don't want to go through all the effort of making the wheel again and trying to get it exactly the same size. So there's a little kind of cheat that you can use in Tinkercad, and it's very, very helpful, and it's called duplicate. So the du duplicate just means making a copy of something, okay? So we're going to duplicate these wheel this wheel so that we can have four of them. What I'm going to do, the first thing is you need to make sure the object that you want to copy is selected, okay? So if I had that selected and did the duplicate button, it's going to make a copy of the car body. I want the wheel, so I select my wheel, and I go up here. This button here, it looks like a bunch of papers together. This is the duplicate button. So what it does, it will copy it and it will put it on top of the shape. So for example, I'll click it now and it looks like nothing happened, okay? It looks like it didn't work, but it did work. It's actually just on top of the old wheel. So the way to fix this is using your arrow keys. Don't click off the shape, just Use your arrow keys straight away, and you can actually separate them and move it into the right spot. So let me change my view a little bit. Okay, that's looking, starting to look a little bit like more like a car or a go-kart. I don't know. It's not going to be the, the snazziest looking car, but it's a good start. So I've got my two wheels there. Let me just check. They look pretty lined up, so I'm happy with that. So I'm going to click off there. Okay, now those two are done. But we know 
well, this car is going to have four wheels. You could make a car with three wheels or ten wheels. It's up to you when you do your car. But mine's going to have four wheels. So what I'm going to do here is I want to duplicate them again because I want to keep them the same distance. So this time I'm going to select that one and I'm going to use my magical shift key again. Okay, this is important, but it's for a different purpose. So shift if you're holding shift like we did before and using the squares, we know it changes the scale. But if you hold if you hold shift and click an object and then you click another object you'll notice that they're both selected now so if you hold shift while you're clicking objects it will select more than one okay so i'll show you that again at the moment the body's selected but if i click the wheel one wheel selected if i hold shift down you'll see my shift is held down and i click the other wheel they are now both selected so now what we can do is we can duplicate again and this time it's going to copy both of them. So I click duplicate. Again, it looks like nothing's happened, but I know it's there. It's just over the top. So what I need to do is now use my arrows. Now I'm going to, I want it to go to the right. So I'm going to tap my right arrow. I'm going to change my view a little bit and I'm going to bring it all the way until it's over there. Wow. Okay. Now it's looking like a car. All right. Pretty slick looking car if you ask me. <laughs> Not really, but it will get there. Okay. So we've got our four wheels. It's, it's looking like a car, okay? This is an acceptable car. If I showed someone this, they would say, that's a car. So I think we're on the right track with this. Okay, so there's my little box car. Uh, it's looking a little bit too boxy for my liking, so I want to put a little roof on it. So the way we can do this, find what you would like to use as a roof over here, and just like we did before, drag it onto the work plane. Now, if I move over here, Oops, okay, so I want my I want my roof to be a roof, so it needs to be on top. So we've used this tool before. We're going to drag the cone up. I'm going to change my view a little bit so I can see what I'm actually doing. Now I'm going to use my arrow keys to position my roof on top of my car body. So keep checking because it might look it might look fine on one view and the other side. Um, might be sticking out. I'm going to click my black square and make it a little bit smaller. Okay, there we go. So a little bit, all right, that's perfect. So I've got that. My roof is on. It's, oh, it's a little bit up. So I can use that to drag it down. Okay, now I would like to actually extend this a little bit. Okay. That. Now, at the moment, it's solid. I want it to kind of look a little bit like glass. So what I'm going to do, I'll keep it blue, but I'm going to tick this little box here that says transparent. And now, it looks like my car has a big glass window or roof on top of it. Okay, so I'm liking the car, but I feel like I want the front of the car to be on a little bit of a slope. Okay, I want an angled front to my car. So I need to actually cut away at the body. Now to do this, you're going to have to follow along first and see, you'll see how it comes together in a minute. So I'm going to use this wedge shape because I can see there's an angle already on it. So I think I can use that angle to my advantage. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to rotate it so it's aligned with my the front. So I'm going to use my arrow keys and move it a little bit more. And now what I'm going to do is rotate it because I want this angle. So I'm going to rotate it about there. Okay, now I'm going to move it, use my arrow keys, move it closer. Now with this shape selected, I'm going to turn it from a solid into a hole. And what this means is basically that you are going to use this shape to cut a hole out of this shape. Okay, so if I head o if I use that now, use my arrow keys and take it into my car, you can see that where this crosses through, it leaves a shadow. So if I was to, I'm just going to do it as an example. If I was to use this now as a hole, this is what would happen. Okay. I don't, that's not what I want with my car. So I'm going to go back and undo that because that's not what I wanted. So I'm actually going to drag this up and 
I might change the angle a bit. I can see there it's a bit steep, so I want my angle like uh, that. Move it back a little bit. And like that. Okay, so you can see there that that part's in the shadow, which means this shape is going to cut the shadow part away from this shape. Okay, so what I have to do now is actually perform the cut or make the hole. So the way we do this is just like before with the wheels when we selected both of them, we held down the shift button. Okay, so I'm going to hold down the shift button and make sure that my hole shape is selected and also the shape or the object that I'm cutting through is selected too. So we're cutting through the body of the car, so I'm going to have them both selected. Then I move my mouse up to here and I click this button here which is the group button. When I click this group button it's going to it's going to cut the hole out of it. So let's see if it works. Perfect. Okay so this is my pretty plain looking car but I just wanted to show you guys some of the ways that you can actually create things on Tinkercad. This is just a starting point. Um, you know, this video is going to be watched by my year two groups and also my year six groups. So, depending on how far you want to take it, guys, it's up to you. You can get creative with creating your car. Um, you know, you could add, you could chuck some lights on the front of your car, for example. Maybe if I could make those yellow, shrink them. You know, some of the things that we've been looking at, rotate that. If I use my arrow keys, I could probably bring it back to the front of my car. It's still a bit big, but if I then, you know, I can drag it up like that, bring it a bit forward, probably need a little bit smaller. And now I've got a light, you know, a light there looking not great, but it's quick. Then if I wanted to make another light, we know that we can select that. We can click the duplicate tool. We can then move our other light across. Okay, now I've got two lights on the front of my car. You know, you might want to add some turbo boost. Maybe let's we could put an exhaust pipe on the back here. Let's scroll down. Okay, maybe we could use this. If I extend it, no, nope, not that way. Okay, maybe not that. Let's not use that. Is there a pipe? We could use a tube. There we go. We could use the tube. We need to make that much smaller. I might make it grey. Let's see if we can make that grey. Okay, I'll rotate. Let's rotate that. Zoom in so I can see a little bit. Okay, zoom in. Let's change the view. Oop. So we could then take it over here. Bring it up. So now, you know, it has an exhaust. It's looking a little bit more interesting. You guys can get creative. There's lots of really, you know, it just depends... If you're interested in it and you want to learn more and you want to practice, then there are some really, really cool things you can design on here. An example of a more skilled person creating a car on Tinkercad would be a car that looks something like this. So this is a Formula One car that's been designed um, on Tinkercad. The person who's made this has obviously spent a lot of time practicing and getting used to the program. So I just wanted to show you this, just so you had an idea of some of the things that are possible when using Tinkercad and not just using my little design of my box car to think that this is where it ends. You can make a lot more things with Tinkercad. Um, and you might also have noticed on the class site there was there's an image there's some images that you can go through of other people's um, cars that they have designed on Tinkercad. So um, you could use those for some ideas, or you could um, just use one, make one from your imagination. A couple more things before the end of the video is that I forgot to mention if you place an object and you don't want it there if you just push the delete button on your keyboard that will get rid of it another thing is when you when you're working your computer should save um, your work automatically but when you exit the program if you press this um, your little menu tinkercad here it will make sure it saves it before you leave so um, have a go at playing around with the program 
next Wednesday, I'm going to be running some Zoom sessions with you guys, with each STEM group, and you'll have an opportunity to share the designs that you've you've made, um, to, and talk to each other about what we found difficult, and you know what we what we liked and what we didn't like. Um, so I'm looking forward to those to those Zoom Zoom sessions. So I will post up more information on the class site over the weekend, and that will have a bit more. Um, information about our Zoom sessions, so I hope everyone stays safe and looking forward to seeing you guys. Bye.